to me, a versatile lens is a lens that does it all. One lens that, in situations when it's not practical or convenient to change lenses, can be more usable and easier to get a variety of shots with. 24 to 70 millimeter gives that versatility and it is the most common standard focal range in zoom lenses. This Sigma 24 70 millimeter f2.8 DGDNR has been out for a while now and it is still one of the best, if not the best option in this category for Sony E and L mount cameras. A lot of people buying new full frame cameras are left with the dilemma. Which lens is the best for me? In my opinion, this is the perfect choice when you want to shoot a bit of everything and want that pro quality and feel straight out of the box. In this video, I am pairing it specifically with my Sony, my new Sony a7 IV to show you why this lens is very special. Don't go anywhere, don't skip, keep watching. I do like prime lenses and I do use 24, 35, 50 and 85 millimeters. So why would you need or want a lens like this that if you ignore the aperture differences between this and the primes covers pretty much the same focal ranges. The focal ranges certainly overlap in numbers, but not in functionality. 24 to 70 millimeter gives you the freedom to shoot all those focal ranges without the need to keep changing lenses. And the zoom makes it easier to get those different looks without moving forward or backwards as you would have to with primes. It's not even all about the zoom functionality as you get a different look from a 50 millimeter prime than you do at 50 millimeter from zoom lens. Sigma art lenses are known for that superb quality that they deliver, but this lens appeals to more people than any other lens in Sigma lens lineup because it is a lens for everything. Well, almost everything. The first thing that most people will think, people who don't use zooms like this one, that with the minimum aperture of only f2.8, you won't get that subject to background separation. You won't get that professional look and bokeh. This is not entirely true as with all the zooms, you get the zoom compression when the background seems closer to the subject than it really is and also more blurred when zooming in. This lens delivers incredible results. I shoot with a lot of lenses constantly for, for the reviews here on my channel and as well as professionally. And as soon as I put this on my camera, I am every single time wowed. There's just something special in how good the lens renders the colors, how sharp the images are, even, even wide open. There's very little chromatic aberration visible, but as with all current DGDN Sigmas, there's a visible bulging pin cushion visible when shooting raw images, fixable with one click or on import into Lightroom or by the camera if you shoot JPEG or video. Nothing unusual or anything that could be described as bad. 24 mm is wide enough for most of street landscape or interior photography. Not ultra wide to bring wide angle distortion to the table, but wide enough to be treated as a wide angle lens. Certainly good enough for getting into the tighter spaces with or when you want to get more in the in the more in the frame. 70 mm and anywhere in between 24 and 70 is great for portrait, close up and nature photography and versatile enough to be just one lens that you stick with all day long when you are out in town or hike or, or when shooting events. The build quality, I need to mention that the dust issue that a lot of people are still talking about has been fixed. There was a problem with dust getting behind the glass with the early copies. Right, I had to stop myself from waffling about this dust problem with this lens because while editing this video and actually shooting the b-roll of this lens, I have found a dust inside of it. Yes, it's a problem with the early copies of this lens. Only the early copies. Sigma has actually acknowledged the problem, this problem, and they have updated the design, the, the build of this lens. So you have to check the serial number, which is on the lens, it's pretty much black on black, it's very hard to see, but it's right above the Sigma, the Sigma logo underneath the focus, focus ring. And any serial numbers, after 5.5.6.4.1.7.7.5 are not affected by the dust problem. The, the design has been upgraded, the, the lens uh, weather sealing is just the same as with any other Sigma lens proper. Any previous models before before that, any earlier copies of this lens might have this problem like, like this one I've got here. But the good news is Sigma will fix it for free. All you have to pay is the shipping to Sigma and Sigma will repair this and upgrade the, the, the lens 
designs to be proper weather sealed and no dust getting inside. Classic, solid, sturdy Sigma build here. It's not a light lens weighing hefty 830 grams. This might be a problem for some people, but it is not an unusual weight for a lens of this spec and in this class. Three buttons, three buttons, a standard auto manual focus switch, focus hold that can be programmed to other functions by the camera and a little lock switch to lock the lens in a 24 millimeter fully zoomed out so the lens doesn't extend when pulled out of the camera bag or a, or a case. Super smooth large focus ring at the front of the lens and smaller zoom ring uh, near the camera. As with all Sigmas, the zoom ring turns anti-clockwise to zoom in. It's not a problem if you only use Sigma lenses, but if you also, like, like me, use Sony and Tamron lenses, it makes using this lens a little bit frustrating sometimes, as my muscle memory or instinct tell me to zoom in by turning the ring clockwise. Not a problem if this is your only zoom lens or you use it a lot, you just, just simply get used to it. No stabilization built in, but it has got a weather sealing uh, and it has got a large filter diameter of 82 millimeters. Value for money, this lens retails currently for 1,050 pounds here in UK or $1,100 in US. Well built, professional grade, amazing quality, versatile standard zoom lens. I think it is great value, but the competition from Tamron is very stiff. Tamron specifically. Tamron new version of their 28 to 75 millimeter lens is 200 pounds or 300 dollars cheaper than this. It is also lighter. Is the extra five millimeter at the zoom end and four millimeter less at the wider end worth this much more money? Maybe not for everyone, but for some who need as much wide angle as possible on the standard zoom, this could be no brainer. Also, some people, including me, sometimes prefer that extra weight, especially when filming handheld to give you that bit of extra stability. I personally don't think that the price difference is that huge and only you can decide if 24 to 70 millimeter is the right focal range for you. I know that these are just the numbers, but when I shoot with this lens, I always feel that 24 millimeter is just tiny, tiny bit too tight sometimes. I just want the widest possible every time I'm shooting with this. Yeah, just saying. There's also Sony's own 24 to 70 millimeter f2.8 G Master lens available. This might get a modern update soon, but for now it is a very dated lens that is almost thousand pounds or dollars more expensive than this. Another alternative is Sigma 28 to 70 millimeter. Yes, cheaper and smaller, lighter, but as the Tamron, it's not 24 millimeter at the wider end. Conclusion, this is the lens that in my opinion is a perfect choice for anyone who wants or needs that professional quality, versatile standard zoom. The quality it delivers is superb. It's a lens that it's, it is hard to take a bad picture with. Very decent size, a little bit heavy, could be a bad or a good thing, and it is uh, priced reasonably well. Yes, the competition from Tamron might make some people think about it twice, but for what it is and the quality it delivers, the price is not bad at all. Over the last two years, I've used it on Sony a7S II for video work a long time ago, a7S III for photography and video, and now it feels even better on a7IV. A lens that is a pleasure to shoot with and one that simply just keeps giving. I'm a big fan and if I had no other lens, I would have no problem shooting literally everything with it. And that's it. I hope this video was in some way informative or entertaining. If it was, please give me the thumbs up. Consider subscribing and I'll see you next time. I do like prime lenses and I do... I do like prime... I do like prime lenses and I... Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> pow, pow, pow. There's just something special in how good the lens... There's very little there boom 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 as with all as with as with there with with great power comes great responsibility with great weight comes great stability <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>